Meanwhile, one ran for president and created a revolution. The other's running for senator and hopes to do the same. Now, you know, Ron Paul, that fellow on the right is his son, Rand, who is running for senator in Kentucky. In fact, he announced that on my uh, Fox News show. Both are with me right now. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Good to be with you, Neil. You know, you both have uh, made causes, indeed, in your case, uh, Ron, your entire life devoted to combating big government on health care reform. It, it's looking so big now. Uh, more folks are coming your way. Uh, Ron Paul, to you first, do you think this thing goes through, and then what? Well, I, I think it will go through in uh, some form, but it will do what every other uh, program has done over the last 30 or 40 years. It will increase the cost and it will make the distribution of medical care uh, more cumbersome. Uh, it will not improve the quality of care, but you can be guaranteed it's going to cost more and it's going to cost a lot more than they're admitting. It's been that way with every program since the 50s. Now, Rand, do you share your dad's view of, um, you know, government too big as government run amok? We're having trouble in Kentucky understanding how Bacchus's bill, which is $800 billion, is really not going to cost us anything. It doesn't make a lot of sense to us. I see the problems in health care is that there's not enough capitalism, that there's too much government, and we're going the opposite way. In health care, we have private ownership and profit, but we don't have freely fluctuating prices. So you can't have capitalism unless you have freely fluctuating prices and competition. They call this the Free Choices Act, but it really should be called, I'm going to limit your choices in Health Care Act. Ren, would you use your dad on the stump a lot, or do you want to, not that you don't love your dad, of course, that you want to break away <laughs> from him because everyone knows you're Ron Paul's son? Well, it has opened quite a few doors, and I couldn't do <laughs> this without his freedom movement that he started. So I readily admit that and don't run away from that at all. But I also say that I can't win this on his, his merits. I have to win this on my merits. I have to be able to articulate the freedom message, the message of capitalism, the message of less government in my own words. And actually, I have to grow the freedom movement. While we're big, we haven't been big enough to win a lot of races yet. So I have to be able to grow the movement big enough to win a primary. But we're shaking them up here. And it's pretty amazing how much we've done in the last four months here in Kentucky. You know, Ron, with, with apologies to your son, I mean, there are many who look at this now and say, well, Republicans have failed on spending. You've even mentioned that yourself. Um, Democrats have failed on spending. So maybe there's a third party way. Um, and many have always pushed you in that direction. You've always pushed back and said, no. Are you open to that? Do you think your son should be open to that? No, I don't think so. Uh, Rand talks about the freedom movement, and that's what we're talking about. The one thing is, is if you have a true revolution, which I notice uh, people in the media, besides myself, are talking about a revolution. A true revolution uh, is pervasive. It influences Democrats and Republicans. For instance, I think this uh, whole mo move to audit the Fed is very, very bipartisan. So if it's of value, it gets into both parties. Keynesianism has invaded over the many years, both the Republicans and the Democratic Party. And I kill, still remember hearing Nixon say, we're all Keynesians now. Someday we want people to say, we're all free marketeers now and we believe in sound money. That would show that we have uh, uh, been going the right way and are winning the fight. You know, the argument has been made, though, that Republicans, if you don't mind me getting parochial again, ran, had their chance and, and that their free market ways, I know not as free as your dad would like, but clearly freer, let's say, than some of the Democratic alternatives, their laissez-faire approach, their cut taxes and yada, yada, it got us in a big heap of trouble. And, and, and the rap is the Republicans are coming back with the same script. And uh, we've been there, done that, and they're hardly the ones to come back and, and push that. What do you say, Rand? I don't think we quite ever tried it. I mean, we had eight years of control or six of eight years of control under George W. Bush, and we doubled the debt from five to ten trillion dollars. You know, we did a lot of things we shouldn't have done, but I don't think they were the, it was showing that capitalism fails. I don't think we embraced it. You know, I mean, for many years, we allowed government to regulate the economy, but now we allow the government to own parts of the economy. That happened under a Republican watch. So, no, I don't think we tried capitalism and failed. I think we as Republicans failed to live up to our platform. And I think people are, are ready if we can regain our believability to see us again.
So, Rand, can I say something out of school here? And if you're mad at me and don't do the show again, I can understand, but I hope that's not true. <laughs> that your whole family, everyone's cheap. And you really practice what you preach when it comes to the government not getting too big. That you yourselves, as a family, are cheap. That your dad's cheap. That, Rand, you're cheap. That it takes a lot for you to spend money. Is that true? Oh, I think exactly right. I'm very frugal in my personal <laughs> life, and I'm very frugal. I'm very frugal with the money that people give to me as well. In fact, I've already have a forced savings plan of the money given to me. I'm already putting it aside and saving it for the spring and telling everyone in the campaign, guess what? We don't have a million dollars. We only have fifty thousand dollars because I'm putting it all aside. So what is what do you what, what, what is your you got to have the money? What's the most extravagant thing your dad has splurged on? <laughs> Um, you know, maybe going out for ice cream. Oh man, he's not the uh, big, <laughs> he's not the biggest of the spenders, I don't think either. Why am so. I not? Why am I not surprised? Uh, Dr. Rand Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> Congressman Ron Paul, thank, thank you. you very much. It's a delight having both of you here.